He had the passion for aviation from the very beginning. I think my entire life I needed to prove something to myself that I was good enough. Whether it was as a naval aviator, whether it was my time in a space program, but I guess that's the way I really look at myself. Someone who had to strive a little bit harder, reach a little bit further for something I believed that was worthwhile doing. All my life, that's all I wanted to do is become a naval aviator. My dad had a dream as well. Uh, my dream was to fly airplanes off aircraft carriers. His dream was for me to get the education that he never had an opportunity to get. I graduated from Purdue with orders to Pensacola, Navy flight training in one hand, and an engineering degree in the other hand. My dream and his dream came together. And that really probably is the story of the rest of my life. I believe the Kennedy Challenge was uh, almost revolutionary in energizing America made the American people believe in a dream. Captain Gene Cernan was selected for the astronaut program in 1963 and flew into space three times on Gemini 9, Apollo 10, and as commander of Apollo 17, NASA's final moon mission in 1972. Working with uh, Gene Cernan was really a lot of fun. My one time that we actually worked as a team was on Gemini 12. He was a backup on that flight uh, to, to Buzz Aldrin. In the process of learning to work in this new environment, Gene was one of the pioneers. Within 10 years, I was walking around the world. I'd gone to the moon twice, walked on the moon, commanded a flight. It was a fairy tale, absolute fairy tale. I don't know why it was me, but it was. I followed my dad's guidance. I did my best, and in looking back, I guess I did surprise myself as well. Imagine yourself sitting on God's front porch, looking back at the Earth, a small part of the creation of the universe. If you can put yourself in that place, that's what it feels like to stand on the surface of the moon. His daughter's initials will last for an eternity. I did it after I parked the rover, and all I did was scribble TDC, Teresa Don Cernan. Those initials will be there forever, however long forever is. He was really the astronaut's astronaut. Captain Gene Cernan retired from the Navy and NASA in 1976. Since then, he has tirelessly channeled his energies into promoting aviation interests. Time is one of the most valuable assets you and I have. It's what we do with our time and how we make use of it. And business aviation has allowed America to be a leader in the world. It's here to stay. We have got to get some of these young pilots who are coming up, particularly in the high-tech world, to start Remembering I have to fly the airplane. Use technology as an aid, not a crutch. Don't forget to fly the airplane. The thing that people forget, don't give both aviation and space program credit for, is the educational impact it has on young kids. I've always said if you can get a kid's attention, make learning fun, you can teach them anything. I think there are many, uh, many descriptors you could uh, put on Gino. He was the, uh, the first of a new breed. Couldn't ask for a more loyal American who was really, uh, has a positive light towards the success of this country, not only in aviation and in space, but just in general. I consider it a very special honor by an industry and a group of people and friends that's been been part of my life. The last man to walk on the moon is first in the hearts of the aviation community. For his extensive contributions to furthering achievements in aviation and aerospace, the NBAA awards Captain Gene Cernan the 2013 Meritorious Service Award. 
Congratulations, Captain Gene Cernan.